Hello, and welcome to everything you need to know before you start Factorio Industrial Revolution 3. A friend of mine was chatting earlier and mentioned that he was really interested in Factorio, wanted to get into the videos, but had a hard time parsing through everything. Everything just seemed a little bit too complex, convoluted. Um, just hard to really grasp some concepts behind it. So I figured it'd be a great opportunity to uh, share a channel to all the viewers about the, the basics of Factorio, the core details of getting into the game, and particularly focused on Industrial Revolution 3, since that's the game uh, mod that I am playing through currently. So almost everything I'm going to be talking about will apply to Factorio in general, but we'll definitely have a few details very specific to the game mod. So to for starters, Factorio is a game about resource management and automation. It's about taking stuff out of the ground and putting it to work in various ways that get bigger and better as the game goes on, as you unlock new technology. So uh, we could, you know, hammer all day at the rocks, but we want to go a little bit bigger than that. So we can go ahead and get ourselves these mining drills. These mining drills pull it out of the ground. They can put it in a box. They can put it on the conveyor belt and go from there. You can kind of think of what we're about to embark on as a bit of, if you're a Minecraft player, kind of the ultimate redstone farm. So we're going to be expanding and building on what we already have through the use of two key tools, uh, the inserter and the transport belt. The inserter takes from one side of itself to the other, and the uh, conveyor belt just pushes it along in the direction it faces with the arrows there. Simple, right? But yeah, it gets a lot more complicated very quickly. So go ahead and start with the assembler. This is an electric assembler or assembling machine. It is a nice big building that will craft something for us. Take a one recipe and turn it into another. In this case, it's taking stone and turning it into stone bricks. It's a very simple recipe, one to one ratio. It takes about a second to craft, and it just puts the other inserters just putting it into a box. No problem at all. Uh, but yeah, you know, we have to make sure it's it has stone and then we have energy for these machines and etc it gets a little bit more complex when we get another uh point in the chain now we have the stone brick maker putting things into this uh assembly over here we're going to do this recipe which has five stone bricks turning into one wall as you can see there's a little bit of time in between each about four seconds as we do see that it is just going to be taking in one at a time uh these walls are useful. They allow us to protect things that we care about. So we'll definitely want them and we'll want them at a faster speed. What can we do about that? Well, we can go ahead and build on that by uh, thinking about the, the timing and the ratios. Well, if this takes one second to build and this takes one second to build, but this takes five times as much stuff. What you can do is just have five machines, five assemblers, putting stone bricks in, and suddenly we've got 100% uptime on our assembler making these stone uh, walls. So that's just basically how you can do it with a one-to-one -one recipe. And by the way, if you ever see these throughout this video, these little purple pink things, these are little cheat codes I've put in just to uh, go through the demonstration efficiently. So we'll see a couple of them over here as well as we look at our next bit. Well, what if it's not so simple? What if it's not just one-to-one -one ratios on these items? Well, what you can do is take a look at the copper piston. Copper piston is made from copper rods and copper plates. They're coming in on this conveyor belt. Well, the cool thing is that about the inserter is it's taking two things off the line, putting them both into here, and that way it is able to make two things, put them into one. So the way that works is half the transport belt is allocated to one item and the other half is allocated to the other. And that's pretty cool. Now, all this isn't done for free. There are There is one extra step in the process and that's getting energy or fuel for these machines. These electric assemblers and inserters, well, you guessed it, they run on electricity. You can see that on the right side where it says consumes electricity, but that's not true for everything. Uh, the most, in fact, you don't even get these at the start of the Industrial Revolution playthrough. I've, after many hours of playing, I've only just unlocked them because for the most part, you're gonna be running on steam. It's gonna be a bit of a steampunk theme for the early uh, operations of the game and steam is not something that just you can zap out of the air it's going to be something that you have to either boil by putting coal into a boiler that has water coming from a pump or you'll have one of these fancy steam derricks which will be pulling steam directly out of the earth out of a geothermal fissure which of which you only get really one at the beginning of the game from what i can tell but 
that's going to be enough for you to power the machines that you need. And with a little bit of planning, scale it up to the point where you can uh, run a whole factory on, on that resource alone. The third resource to really consider right now is burnable fuel. If you look at these furnaces, they need to burn something. They need heat. So they're going to be burning wood or coal or something along those lines in order to operate. I do have the option of always just like taking coal out of a box as I've been taking it and off the line and putting it in the box. And we can just run that and distribute that across all these machines. Fill it up by hand, it'll run for a while, it's great. We also have to make sure that they're not full. Once they, they fill up all the way, they've made as much as they can, it's gonna stop the machine entirely. We wanna keep it rolling. So we'll go ahead and take an item out of it in order to keep things moving. But what if we don't wanna do that? What if we don't wanna have to refuel them by hand or, or remove the ingots by hand? Well, that's where a little bit of planning with your belts and your inserters can go a long way. Uh, over here we see the tin line. The tin is a resource specific to Industrial Revolution. It's one of your early game resources that allows you to build quite a few things. Not as much as copper, but still quite valuable. And what you can see here is that we have uh, we'll go ahead and hit the Alt key. This is a hotkey that allows you to kind of see what's in the machine. And what you can see here is 10 ingots are being made. They are having coal added to the line and as half of the conveyor belt. So the inserters will refuel the machines for free right off the bat. And then we also have an inserter on the opposite side taking it out and setting it along its way. Let's say that we wanted to emulate that over here. Well, now we're going to introduce some of our friends, the robots. We have ourselves relatively early and then compared to a normal factory or a game, some robots available that will be able to do the job for us. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a copy of this uh, machine work right here and we're just going to rotate it and bring it right over here that's the beauty of factorio is that you can scale things up really heavily and with these robots these construction bots they're able to help you build things out very nicely so you can go ahead and copy that over it doesn't fix the coal problem though we'll have to do that a little differently we can go ahead and just bring this across have these guys meet over here and suddenly you've got coal and copper running to all of your wonderful furnaces and this will just work uh, assuming you have somewhere for the ingots to go this will operate by itself with just a few modifications instead of having you you know babysit it basically throughout uh, the process so the, the robots are great they can uh, even build when you just tell them a, a ghost of something you just basically say hey i want something here well it says hey i can do that in fact you can then copy and paste and scale it up dramatically you can scale it even further over here like you have lots of options even can remove things that you don't want with these ghosts with these bots so we see a deconstruction allowing us to take care of all that uh, they're wonderful little fellows they do need a little energy to get going but the fact that you get them right off the bat industrial revolution is one of my favorite things because the bots are just a lot of fun to play with so yeah as far as things go We've gotten the basics, we've gotten the fuel, we've gotten the process of building one thing into another, but where do we go from there? Well, I think the best opportunity is to talk about how to move things from A to Z. It's a bit of a connect the dots game where we really want to make sure that all of our machines are being powered and given what they need, and oftentimes that's a lot more difficult when you get a lot more machines. Uh, sometimes you'll have a whole line of like 20 different machines that you'll have to be providing stuff with. So we're going to be using something called splitters to help us out. Splitters are a way of either putting multiple uh, lines of conveyor belts or transport belts into a system and pushing it out, or uh, taking one single one and splitting it 50 50 across so you can see up here there's, there's two by two uh two in two out in terms of the, how the splitter works and then down here it's going to be the opposite it's going to be two in and then one out where we are having twice as much stuff go in and we have to kind of consolidate it's it's actually a bit of a misnomer it's not as much a splitter in this case it's more of a, a merger but whatever you want to call it it will get the job done where it will uh, facilitate these conveyor belts you've got uh, one splitter having two in and one out, and here's the opposite with one in and two out. So you can here see that it's about fifth, half of it's going to be going into this one, and half it's going to be doing the other one. It's a bit more less compact, but still just as effective if you want to send your different resources to different places, which you definitely will. 
Um, here is one example of a, f a splitter gone wrong. This is what they call a sushi belt, which will end up being uh, two different resources trying to be split together, and the result is kind of a disaster. You get this copper iron merged together, and it's not nearly as usable, because when you put it into a machine where it only wants one of the two things, or you have a line of machines and you're needing more of one kind than the other, which inevitably will happen, you're going to see something like this, where it gets all blocked up. The iron has nowhere to go, the copper is wanting to get to the machine, but just simply can't. And that's what you have to avoid a little bit. Um, but yeah, at this point, we can then fix that issue by doing the something called side loading. It will allow you to, like we kind of showed a little bit before, uh, throw things onto half the belt, the top half and the bottom half of the belt, or the left and the right if it's running vertically. You basically can divide it into two individual transfer belts that have half the capacity. And from there, you can see right here, it's working pretty well. Simply put, if they meet, if there's a belt going down and a belt going up, and they meet in the middle going left or right, that's going to merge them together very nicely. Then we have the side loader. Uh, here, which does try to accomplish the same thing. You see it's going across, it's going down, it's filling up half of the belt. But with a couple things to note, first of all, you're seeing that it's only pulling from this half specifically. It's not like evenly taking from the top half and the bottom half and putting on there. But more importantly, it's actually not going to work the way you want it to if you want both iron and copper to operate here, because the second we connect the iron, it's going to take priority. We see here it's kind of got the the home stretch advantage where it's already on the belt in the first place. So as long as there's no space, the iron's going to chill here and the copper is going to go nowhere. Instead, you're going to want to uh, split it off onto half of it a little bit. There's a couple ways to do that. We can we can take advantage of that priority system where the conveyor belt that comes first it gets to be where it gets to have what it wants and, and gets to be there. So you see this conveyor belt, this column of conveyor belts was here first. It was when it comes to this point, it gets it was in the column earlier. So what ends up happening is the iron only loads onto half of it rather than the whole thing. And then you can kind of rotate it around and bring it around, and suddenly we have, by doing a one going down, we have all of the iron on the bottom side. Here we do the opposite. Everything going up, well now all of the iron is on the top side. And by doing this, we can then take what is almost the exact same situation as before and make it work, where we have the iron on half the side, the copper on the other half, and everything is working out nicely. So. That is just a few basic ways to make all the pieces play nicely together. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that there are some called underground belts. These things here will connect underground so that if you have one th resource on one side and you need to get across, you make a little bridge uh, that is in kind of invisible but underground that will allow it to send the resources over without mixing. Uh, you can actually do the same thing with pipes, which is going to be super useful later. Uh, water and steam, they want to get to their destinations, well now they can in a crisscross fashion because there's an underground water pipe sending it over. So yeah, from there, uh, I do want to talk a little bit about making the stuff and advancing forward. And from there, we can take a look at this uh, situation now that we know a little bit more about the conveyor belt system. So we've got this setup here where we have this machine making the copper gears. And we want to put it into this transport belt maker that needs copper gears. Uh, but what ends up happening is when we do that, it's got all three things that it needs. It's got the copper gears, it's got the pistons, it's got the belts, but it can't make the transport belts because there's no room on the belt. You see, these copper gears are always being put on the opposite side. That's what inserters do by default. They're normal behavior, put it on the opposite side. You can do some belting tricks to switch it over and, uh, and run the opposite side, but yeah, let's take a look at one way that we can make it work. If we bring it over here, we see it's the exact same setup. We connect it, and it will work because just with that little action that we mentioned before, the priority on the column, it's going to send all the gears to the top and allow the belts to then go across to the side. One last little gizmo that I've added here is a filter on the splitter. The filter allows the, it to exclusively put transport belts on this half of the splitter and uh, anything else will go on this side. And that will mean that we can go ahead and box up what we want and leave the gears on the line. And we'll see that pretty frequently. 
throughout the playthrough. Um, from there, we also have the uh, n real goal of each tier of game. As you progress, you get to unlock new technologies, new buildings, new upgrades, new items, new recipes, and none more important than the assemblers and the analysis packs. So what we can do is combine a couple of basic items into a red science pack or a copper analysis pack as it's referred to here. And by putting those into our labs, which you can see them, they look pretty cool, very custom designs for the industrial revolution. These things will be able to getting you tons of technologies such as a monowheel, uh, a vehicle that you can drive around, forestries where you can grow trees, uh, a heavy roller who doesn't want a steamroller like all this stuff uh, can be yours if you're able to invest the technology and craft up to the next tier and it starts out relatively simple with the red science packs and gets much more complicated as we go through the chain the green the blue the purple the yellow it just it expands so substantially in terms of complexity and potential that to the point it would take two minutes to craft it even if you had all the materials in your hands uh, and yeah that's why you have to kind of plan out all these factory operations all righty so that really covers the basics um, from my perspective if you're just trying to get into it for the first time that's probably a good place to start but if you're looking for a little bit more um, from an intermediate perspective there's a couple things i can add uh, for one industrial revolution uh, features a couple new things because it's so rooted in the early steam technology at least for the uh, copper age and the bronze age what you can end up doing is building something called a steam inserter and that is just like you would expect an inserter that runs on steam and these things are pretty complicated to work into your builds because of the requirement to have pipes injecting steam into them it's not something you're used to and so i'll tell you if you're just expecting a normal factory experience with a couple extra buildings that's not what you're going to get industrial revolution definitely has a few curveballs that you're going to have to work around but it also gives you um, a little bit of grace and a cool, cool new tools to make it work and one of those is the small assembler these little assemblers can make not all the recipes but all the basic ones all the basic components can be built from these assemblers and it allows you to make extremely efficient builds you can see over here i've got a five by five grid here if you count the steam pipes making eight different things something that would you might be able to get one or two items out of we're making eight different things or in this case a chain two chains of four items and yeah that will allow you to really dive into that complexity and even though it takes uh, for like uh, two full minutes to craft a assembling machine you can make it work with the efficiency of the small assemblers. So, big fan of those. One last thing I forgot to mention on the belt side is the priority system. There's input and output priorities. It is a bit intermediate, so it's probably good to save it till now as we can talk about what this means. Input priority left, that would mean that you are going to be prioritizing taking off of this line more than the other. It's not really going to be apparent here because we've got two kinds of belts. We've got the the slowest ones, the yellow ones, and the ones that are double speed, which are the red ones. Over here, you put in priority left, and what you get is a complete standstill on the bottom while all of the resources are coming in from the top. And that's because, again, this is double speed. This is half speed comparatively. And that means that these two full yellow belts can be filled by just this one red one. And yeah, that means that if you import priority like this, then it's going to be sending all of it from the top instead of half and half, uh, as you see it slowly moving there. On the other hand, this one is much more appropriate for an output priority left or an output priority right. What that means is that since there's only two yellow belts or yellow belts coming in, that's going to be half speed. You can put both yellow belts worth of stuff onto the red belt and prioritize the left side here, which is twice as fast. So when you put output priority left, that's what you're going to see. Output priority right, the exact opposite. So if you really want to make sure that all your resources go this direction and only any excess goes off to the left, let's say this one gets backed up, stalled out, you don't need to build whatever you're building over there, then it will feed it into extra bits there. And that's a, a nice little feature. One more thing I wanted to talk about is fluids, or more specifically, the pipes that fluids go into, and how to manage them and distribute them across the factory to get them to where they need to be. It will take quite a while to get into on the Industrial Revolution because it is just a bit of a slower start, but a, a bit more rewarding one as well as we 
are able to kind of get all the pieces together. But like we mentioned, there is the option of having underground pipes, and that becomes much more important with fluids. If you try to put two fluids together, like in this example, we're trying to get the oil to this blue triangle here. We can try to run it across over and around, but it says that we cannot connect systems with different fluids. Fluids can't mix. You put those two together, you got you don't have oil and, and water, you have oily water, and you just don't want that. So underground belts are gonna be very key in making these fluids work, as you can see right here. So we'll pump the oil in, it'll do its job, it will make uh, the different materials here. And, and you see already there are four different products coming out. Uh, you'll see even more clearly as we unlock these, and see what they have to produce. So we're pumping oil in, we got the water flowing in, and we are getting all these different kinds of heavy, light, and petroleum, as well as a byproduct called bitumen. There's gonna be more byproducts in this system than in Vanilla Factorio, which means that there are gonna be things that you don't necessarily want uh, in the ca caught up in the process, and you'll have to remove them from the chain somehow, whether that's polluting the air by venting it out, or it's picking it up and finding use for it somewhere else. Uh, that's just the trick. And you'll, um, but as far as yeah, the, the whole process here, uh, mentioning underground belts, this is how you would try to handle stuff like this. It's a very common, you running parallel lines with one space in between and then doing underground belts to connect the dots where they need to go is a very common way to handle fluids. So you'll see an opportunity for us to uh, connect right here. We're actually full on petroleum and that stops the whole machine from working. You can't get the red, the yellow, or if you wanted the bitumen without uh, getting rid of this petroleum somehow. So we can go ahead, connect right over here and look at the uh, underground belt action. It just shows you how it connects to each little piece and just with one little click, we're able to clear up the line, feed the petroleum into a storage tank and the fire is on again and it's moving. So we're happy about that. And that's, yeah, the importance of underground pipes. Uh, really, it's not that complex of a game overall. It just requires some practice. It requires you kind of looking at it bit by bit, and over time, everything kind of comes together as you see uh, more patterns in the game. You know, you start by having an electric assembler that's just putting things into a box, and you take things out of the box and you do something with it. But eventually, you can build extremely complex uh, combinations just with these few tools at your disposal. I mean, for example, here, if uh, you really <laughs> want to stretch your brain a little bit, you can you know, pause the video here and think about how this whole process works. We know what splitters do. We know what underground belts do. This is just a combination of those two tools to find a way to take four resources, moving a lot of material at once, and finding ways to distribute it uh, in different areas. Like if we wanted copper and iron to go here, if we wanted the gold and tin to go in this area, now we have a way to make that happen. These are just examples, of course, but yeah, it, it, how you build it, how you design it, how you make it yours is really up to you because whether you're trying to build the old spaghetti factory or you're enjoying a cookie cutter build with lots of blueprints, like whatever you want to do, it's really up to you. And eh, I think that's about it. That basically covers everything I wanted to, but I don't think any Factorio video would be complete as far as tutorials go without mentioning trains. Trains are just a very effect, fast and effective way of bringing a large amount of resources from one location to another. And we'll see that here as we have a whole loading station set up, the physical materials in the cargo wagon, the liquid materials in the fluid wagon and bringing it all the way over to our next train stop and once it gets here unloading and sending it off so yeah that'll be it that is all the things i wanted to cover just trying to give a download of all the core essentials of factorio including the nuances of the industrial revolution at least what I, i've gotten through so far on the channel and looking forward to see a lot more as we get into more complicated chemical combinations and so on but yeah for right now that's uh, all i have and if you want to download the mod and play it yourself you can go ahead and go to the mods page on the main menu go ahead and hit the install button industrial revolutions right there you can get a few of the dependencies on the right side by clicking the arrows and you're good to go
If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below and I'll try to answer them the best I can. If you like the video, feel free to leave a like down below. If you already knew every single detail mentioned here, maybe you could share this with a friend who might want to know a little bit more. And of course, there's always the option to subscribe to the channel to see more of this content, to check out the Industrial Revolution playthrough. There's a playlist on your screen right there. Uh, but that's it. Uh, thanks so much for checking this out, and I'll see you in the factory.